how the people are doing. So, oh yes, the X100 Pro, it's here, god damn. I've been really looking forward to this, if you can't already tell, because there's so much that Vivo has improved specs-wise. And the reason I'm saying this is because we have significantly better sensors this time around. There's a lot going on just in the hardware alone. And you know what that usually means? Either, either the X100 is going to give us insane photography or videography, who knows, I haven't tested out videos yet or it's gonna mess up with the software because the new hardware is not quite calibrated with the software. Either of those two things can happen. Either it's gonna be splendid or it's gonna go down in flames. So let's jump in because there's so much to talk about. All right, so the first and foremost thing that we need to get out of the way is which color profile should you use with the X100 Pro? So this is a vivid, basic like AI colors profile that you get. And it looks nice. It looks more vivid than the OnePlus 11, which is quite good because if you get a really good vibrance, then for those who like the vibrance, they're gonna enjoy it a lot. Now, the beauty of the X100 Pro is that you can also go for very natural colors with the Zeiss natural colors option. And as you can see, immediately you're getting very natural colors. I mean, this is almost exactly how I saw it with my eyes. And I think they have actually improved the contrast with Zeiss natural colors. That's one of the small complaints I had with the X90 Pro from last year. This time it seems to have gotten a little bit better. Now the texture mode, this is something that Vivo added last year with the X90 Pro, later on with the software update, and it worked really well. It fixed the low contrast issues that I was having, but it seems like Vivo just bumped up contrast in general with the software. And because of that, in this case at least, the texture mode is going way overboard. This is too much. It doesn't look all that appealing. Maybe, you know, to a certain extent, the stylishness is quite exaggerated, which can be nice in certain cases, but usually I'm not gonna opt for this. I don't need so much style. And this one right here, it's slightly backlit, not exceptionally or anything like that, but you can see the contrast with the Zeiss Natural Colors alone looks fantastic. I think it looks even better than the OnePlus 11 because the slightly higher contrast really makes the image pop, whilst the OnePlus looks a touch flatter than I would personally like. It's a personal preference at this point, I think, because both are doing a fantastic job. But then textured mode, and I think you can tell, it's a problem. I would not recommend using textured mode with the Vivo X100. Now this, right here, oh yes. It is a coffee panna cotta with a luxurious chocolate ganache on top, and man. I'm telling you right now, because I have tasted it, Yes, indeed, it tastes as delicious as it looks, bloody hell. But the point of this is that it's a main camera close-up. Both are doing an exceptional job, both can do really well close-ups. And the thing about the X100 is that it is 100% real. They fine-tuned Zeiss natural colors even more to the point that it's just perfect at this point. The contrast is higher, which I do like a lot. And it just, it looks great. I also wanted to try texture mode one last time, just see if maybe food is where you want to use texture mode. And well, I'm a little torn. I don't like that it's underexposing, but I do like the depth in the colors it has. It's not oversaturating, rather it is giving you more depth. Maybe the underexposure has some role in that. But yeah, for the most part, I think we should just stick with Zeiss Natural Colors. It looks plenty good enough. And it's very consistent, as you can see, because even with a completely backlit main camera shot over here, I do like how it looks on the X100. Now, I do think some of the shadows look a little bit better on the OnePlus because it is really pumping up the HDR over here, but also I do think it looks a little bit more flat as opposed to the X100. I'm very toned on this, as you can probably tell. I'm not really sure which one I really like, and it's very hard for me to pick, so I'm gonna just leave this up to you. Now then, for the ultra-wide camera, I, I think, personally, both look very nice in this case, there's just nothing wrong with it, but the OnePlus, see this was really during sunset that I took the shot and you can see on the street the warmth that's coming in, the slight magenta hues that are making it into the shot, it looks very realistic. The X100 is kind of overcompensating a little bit more than I'd like, even though it is using Zeiss Natural Colors. But then with textured mode, in this case at least, in the end, it's a very particular case where it just worked out. The problem, however, is that it is very inconsistent. And yes, there may be some instances when textured mode works on the X100, but in most cases, you're gonna get results like these, which are underexposed, a little too dark, and just not quite what you'd expect out of the X100. And that's why, one final time, I'm gonna recommend using the astral colors, because you can see, 
it looks perfect the moment you turn Zest Astro Colors on. It's going to give you the most consistent results, so that's going to be my recommendation through and through. Now, macro. I don't know what's, what was the problem with OnePlus here, because it really could not focus on the flower front. Like, I had to get way further back than I would personally like. The X100 gets super close. Like, this is exactly what I would expect from the OnePlus, but I don't know why it failed in this particular case. However, the interesting thing about the X100 is that it can actually use its periscope camera for macro. And that just, that looks different. Like, the fact that they are using the periscope camera alone, I think it gives a very different look to the macro shot. And, you know, you can use the ultra wide camera. It still gives you good macro, but the periscope camera with the depth of field, it just looks different. And you get no distortion either. So that's a plus point, in my opinion, in many cases, like in this one. And you can use 8.6x crop. So 4.3x is the optical zoom, but 8.6x, I'm not entirely certain if it senses a crop or not, but I can tell you this much, it looks very realistic in terms of the details. It doesn't look like it's being processed. And there wasn't an absolute boatload of light in this case, and I'm not gonna complain. The 8.66 is incredible to look at. But speaking of zoom, let's take a look at it. So this is 2x, and I think both look great because the X100 is using sensor crop and it's a very like a ludicrously high quality sensor crop that we're getting. It's basically the same level of detail. I did zoom in and check. OnePlus, of course, has 2x optical, so I don't expect anything less from that. But 4.3x, anything beyond that, you know, you're gonna get much, much better results from the X100 for obvious reasons. Now this right here, this is, I believe it's a 10x. Yes, it's, it's a 10x. So of course it looks exceptional on the X100. No OnePlus can't really keep up. It doesn't have the long range optical zoom. And then of course, every single rear camera on both of these phones, they all have high res options. Now whether they work properly or not, that's a different thing. That's exactly what you're gonna talk about. So this is with the main camera and I think the images themselves, they look really nice. But the detail preservation, Oh man, I mean, do, do I need to explain which one's better here? I don't think so, because it's pretty clear. Now, I'll give you this much. The OnePlus 11 has a bit of an issue when it comes to high res. It can't really produce good detail. Like, this is not what you'd expect from a 50 megapixel shot. The X100 is, is fairly exceptional. Like, it's, it's doing a very, very good job. I mean, it's significantly better than the OnePlus, for obvious reasons. Now with the ultra wide camera, see the one thing that I don't really like about the X100 is that we don't get any of the color profiles. We have to stick with whatever comes on by default. I think it's a vivid color profile with the high res options. But regardless of that, when we zoom in, I mean, you can tell it's got way more detail on the X100. Now, I'm not sure if this is an exceptional amount of detail or maybe it's just a lot more detail as opposed to the OnePlus which in general doesn't give you a lot of detail. So, yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. There are other cameras that I will compare the X100 with that can produce insane levels of detail with their high-res cameras, including the ultrawides. So stick around for that. That's gonna be very interesting to say the very least. Now 2X, this is very interesting. So anyone in their right mind, they would expect the OnePlus 11 to have a leg up because it has a 32 megapixel 2X optical zoom, which is going up against Vivo's 2x sensor crop. That's the important bit. But when we zoom in, what's this? <laughs> I, I could not believe my bloody eyes. It, it still flabbergasts me. Just how can sensor crop on the Vivo be this good? Because I've tested out the OnePlus 11 32 megapixel against other cameras that have sensor crop, and most of the time, the OnePlus came out on top, or at least it did just as good a job. There was never this much difference. And yeah, I checked. I did not mix up the images. That is indeed the image from Vivo, and the lower quality one somehow is a high-res image from OnePlus. Goddamn. Anyways, let's move on to 4.3. Let's just put it this way. Obviously, Vivo's gonna do a better job. And by the way, OnePlus is warming the image up a little too much. It doesn't really look quite as good. And when we zoom in naturally, the X100 has more detail. I didn't think anyone expected anything less. It's a 2X that really blew my mind into smithereens. Because damn, that was a lot of detail. I guess you could say it's a testament to just how good the main camera itself is. But now let's take a look at selfies. See, I wanted to take selfies indoors for this one. Just to test it out, really. Not because the sun was setting, 
definitely not. But anyways, in this case, as you can tell, there are a few major things that I really like. First of all, just look at the balance and the skin tones. The balance and contrast, that is. I don't think I've seen a more perfect shot given just how difficult the situation is. Now, the OnePlus can produce fairly nice selfies in most cases, but I mean, the X100 is on a different level. No two ways about that. Just to be very clear about it. Another thing I really like is that the X100 has this significantly wider field of view, which, in my opinion, with selfies, the wider the field of view, it just comes out better because my face is smaller. <laughs> I just prefer it that way. Anyways, this one, you know, it's in white lighting. We have a warm light in the background, and uh, yeah, I think it looks better on the X100. It is blowing out some of the warm light in the background a little bit, but the contrast on my face, the colors, the detail preservation, it's all better compared to the OnePlus 11. I mean, the differences are minor, but they add up. In this case, however, the, the differences are not minor, not by a very, very long shirt. Because this is probably the hardest situation in which I've taken a selfie in my entire damn life. Just, I, I really need to explain it. The, there are three warm lights in the background and not a single light in front. No, to be entirely honest, I expected this to be where the X100 falters along with the OnePlus because the OnePlus is faltering. It's got a lot of issues. It's artifacting, not a lot of detail on my face. It looks a little flat. Overall, the X100, it really does take it with selfies. That's just, it's incredible. But that's not all, of course. We also have the selfie portraits and I think selfie portraits are incredible. On both, to be entirely honest. As long as you have decent normal lighting, I think it looks really nice except for the fact that on the OnePlus, there's this weird magenta action happening on like the upper half of my t-shirt. The X100 is not uh, causing any issues in that regard, so I think that alone gives it an edge in this case at least. But this backlit portrait, once again, the, the consistency and the balance in contrast, it's so bloody perfect on the X100 that I just, I don't have anything to complain about. The OnePlus immediately falters. You can see just how faded and how flat it looks. Not a problem on the X100, that's quite something if you ask me. That was obviously not an easy shot. This one as well, not exactly an easy shot, slightly backlit. And also I'm taking a cinematic portrait on the X100. And the reason you can take it now really well is because you have a much wider field of view. So even with a 21 by nine aspect ratio, you can get a fairly decent shot and you get the anamorphic bouquet in the background, which at this point you should know I'm a fan. Now the one thing that I can finally complain about on the X100 Pro is that they did not fix the selfie night mode. Not that I use it. To be entirely honest, I don't think I've ever used selfie night mode on any smartphone thus far. Good, bad, doesn't even matter, I've never used it. But yeah, it's definitely something that they're lacking in. That much I can tell you right now. So is the OnePlus to be entirely honest, but yeah. I kind of expected them to fix everything, but maybe that's, that was uh, going a little too far. Now, when it comes to portraits, it's a lot of mercy because there's so much to the portraits. I, I'm not even gonna cover everything because they have these filters. Yeah, it's kind of wrong to call them filters because they really alter the color profile a lot. And you can get some ridiculous stylish stuff if you really want it. We have about 10 different focal lengths. We'll cover the focal lengths here. Now, in this case, I once again prefer the X100. It just has so much better skin tones. It's not brightening up my face unnecessarily. And the bouquet in the background looks exceptional. Now, I didn't mention in the previous one, but here as well, the color of my t-shirt is spot on as opposed to the OnePlus 11. Because you can see it looks a little bit purple on the OnePlus. I'm not sure why that's the case because it was very blue, like you can see on the X100. And the contrast in this case, this is a 35 millimeter shot, 1.5 XM. And no, the detail difference is basically non-existent because as you saw with the 2X sensor crop previously, the detail preservation with the 1X camera at the very least on the X100 is unbelievable. And this right here is a fairly challenging 50 millimeter shot, which is essentially 2X on both of these. And I, I don't really like how the OnePlus looks. It's definitely blowing out more parts of my face. It doesn't have nearly enough contrast to look as appealing as the X100 does and it just, X100 is producing perfect shots over and over and over, which is blowing my mind and it's also making my job really hard because I need to find more challenging situations apparently. Now this is an 85 millimeter shot on the X100. I believe that goes to somewhere around 3.5 or 3.7X. 
uh, in terms of the zoom range. And we are still using 2x on the OnePlus because that's the limit. And I think the X100 may be overcompensating for the warmth a little bit more. And by the way, I'll tell you what's absolutely insane here. We have 3.7x crop on the X100. That's completely digital crop from 1x. And somehow, it's producing more detail. I cropped into my face and checked. The X100 has more detail than the OnePlus 11, which is just using 2x optical zoom. I mean, that's... Yeah, I don't really know how to put that into words, except for saying that it's just mind-blowing. And now this is finally a 4.3x portrait on the X100. I told you, lots of stuff. And it's around 100 millimeters and it looks, it looks fantastic. Don't need to say anything more. I think OnePlus also is doing a very good job here. It wasn't a very challenging situation, so to speak, so both are doing great. I do like the slightly higher contrast on the X100. That should be pretty obvious at this point. Now then, backlit portraits. See, this is where things get very challenging for both phones, and I think both are performing equally as well here. It's mainly in the regular portraits and in the slightly less challenging situations that OnePlus falters more, seemingly. Well, the X100 is very consistent across the board. There's a 2X on both, again, backlit, and I think both look very nice. I do prefer the contrast on the X100 once again. The OnePlus does have a tendency to just give you a very faded image. I guess, in a way, it's playing safe. It's ensuring that there's detail in the shadows, but more often than not, that just makes it look not quite as, a, as appealing as the X100, at the very least. Now, finally, we have night portraits, and except for a little bit of the edge detection right at the side of my face, you can see it, there are no other defects on the X100. The OnePlus, obviously, too dark, too high contrast, doesn't really look as appealing. But anyways, let's now move on to our night mode, regular rear camera night mode. And you might be thinking, why the hell did I bother taking such a boring picture? The night sky, simple, honest reason. And uh, yeah, I think I think it's pretty obvious. And we will finally improve their bloody night skies. That is monumental, in my opinion, because it's been one of the things that I've been consistently complaining about. But not exactly complaining, it's been some of these, I guess, a pet peeve of mine on the X90 Pro, because it used to brighten and really give you a blue night sky, which I did not particularly enjoy. It looks way better now. Way cleaner, way darker exactly how night sky should be. The OnePlus usually gives us a lot of artifacting and I can see the same amount of artifacting here as well. You might not be able to see it on YouTube, but believe me, it's all there. Same story here. Just look at the beautiful, perfectly smooth night sky on the X100. It's just, it's exceptional. It's a very difficult shot, this one. I think both are doing a very good job, but overall, the X100 with the slightly better night sky is taking the edge. And this right here is a main camera close-up, again with night mode. And I think now, the OnePlus is doing a slightly better job. It has better contrast, slightly more realistic colors, and overall, the details are very similar on both. But the colors and the contrast, that's basically what's kind of steering me towards the OnePlus here. This is our final main camera shot, and I mean, you can tell, it's a very difficult one. There's a lot of flaring going on. That's kind of why I took it to see how the flaring is gonna happen. And I think the X100 is definitely handling it a little bit better. If anything, the image is in OnePlus's favor because I kind of messed up the framing a little. It happens, I'm human. And I kind of missed the light being in the shot. It's, it's there at the edge, but it's not exactly in the shot. But even then, the X100 is pulling ahead, so that's, that's quite something. But with all of that said and done, let's finally get to ultra-wide night mode. Now, ultra-wide night mode was a massive issue that we had with the X90 Pro. We really need to make this very clear because they fixed it. It's just, it's fantastic now. Mainly because they probably changed up the sensor, gave us a significantly higher quality one, and it's it's absolutely perfect. It looks incredible. It doesn't have the magenta hue that we get on the OnePlus 11. Uh, it, this is a perfect shot on the X100. There's no two ways about that. And yeah, I know, I know. I'm singing praises of the X100 over and over, but what do you expect from me? It's doing a good job. There's no other way to say it. Like, if you look at this image, any day of the week, I'll pick the X100. Hell, you can see more stars on the X100 sky. And it's significantly smoother, less noise. It's It's got less artifacting, less of a bluish look that we get on the OnePlus, and more detail than the OnePlus. This is a very, very challenging shot, let me tell you. The fact that both phones are exposing the shadows so well, 
it's quite something in my opinion. I think both are doing a really good job in that regard. But once again, the night sky, the way the the gradient is happening in the sky, I think it looks way better on the X100 as opposed to the OnePlus, although the OnePlus is handling the lens flares a little bit better. So I guess both of the pros and cons in this case. Now then, let's check out Zoom. So this is 2X and historically speaking, and basically every other phone that I've ever tested out, having a sensor crop usually comes with the disadvantage that when you compare it against something like the OnePlus, which has a 2X optical zoom, the optical sensor is there. Usually, the OnePlus pulls it. Now, it, this scene looks way brighter than it actually was. So I just wanted to make that clear. And I did zoom in and check out if sensor crop is actually as good as the OnePlus 11. Guess what I found out? It's better than the OnePlus 11's optical zoom at night. I mean, what? but anyways, let's take a look at the 4.3x. So I do think that the X100 is messing up the white balance in this case. It's a little too cool in terms of the color temperature and OnePlus is actually doing a better job in that regard. But as you would expect, 4.3x does look better on the X100, way more detail. All right, so that is a wrap for this comparison. And yeah, I know everyone's gonna call me a fanboy probably because I really do like the X100 Pro. I do like the photography that we get from it. It's, it's genuinely very consistent, especially like if you use ice natural colors, you're gonna get very natural colors and you get a lot of contrast now. It just, it looks so good in every shot. Basically all the shots that I took, there were plenty. There were mainly like a few hiccups here and there on the X100 with some white balance issues and so on and so forth. And yes, I also get that the OnePlus 11 is last year's flagship. Technically, I should be comparing to the OnePlus 12. I don't have it yet, that's why I'm comparing it to the OnePlus 11. I think it was a nice last hurrah for the OnePlus 11. It's still an incredible device, one of my favorites from 2023, simple as that. But the X100, what a beautiful and strong start to 2024. I genuinely cannot wait to see what other companies are gonna bring because the OnePlus 12 is gonna probably be incredible. The S24, who knows what's that gonna happen. And yeah, just makes me so much more excited because this is a very good start. And if you've been sticking around all the way to the end, I know this is gonna be exceptionally long, so thanks for that. And secondly, the next comparison is gonna be with the Xiaomi 13 Ultra. We all know that's gonna be bloody fun. So I'll see you guys then. Cheers.